Hi, my name is Jan Wilczek from thewolfsound.com. Welcome to Wolf Talk, a podcast about audio programming. In this podcast, you will learn how to build your career in programming or research related to audio, meet programmers and researchers from all around the world, and learn about the intricacies of sound. Hi everyone, welcome to the seventh episode of the Wolf Talk podcast. Before we go into our special guest today, I just wanted to briefly mention that I am honored uh, to speak or have spoken, depending on when you are listening to this podcast episode, at the Audio Developers Conference 2022. The title of my presentation is A Jumpstart Guide to Deep Learning for Complete Beginners. And it is aimed at people who have no experience and no knowledge or very little knowledge in deep learning in audio whatsoever and feel a little bit intimidated um, before starting in this field. So if you have a chance to go to this conference, either in person or virtually online, then I highly encourage you to attend my talk if you are interested in this topic. And uh, if you are listening to this when the conference is already over, I hope there will be a possibility that you will watch this presentation in hindsight and maybe you'll find it interesting. And now to today's guests. Uh, it's an interview, it's the last interview that I did last year of the members of the Alto Acoustics Lab. And this time it's Tom McKenzie, who is a postdoc researcher at this lab and who specializes in spatial audio. As you will hear, he comes from uh, Great Britain and he's also not only a very good researcher, and an incredibly likable person, but he's also a great musician. And this interview is a kind of a quick fire interview because Tom was very busy at that time, but still I'm very thankful that he took the time to answer my questions regarding spatial audio because he specializes in spatial audio. And exactly in this interview, you will learn what are ambisonics, what is spatial audio in general, what are six degrees on freedom in spatial audio, what is important to achieve a realistic impression in spatial audio, what is, for example, crosstalk cancellation, and how does individualization look in virtual reality. As usual, all the people, places, and uh, things mentioned in this podcast are in the episode notes under dwolfsound.com slash talk 007 and also there I link to Tom's music and I highly encourage you to check it out because it's on a very high level of course whether you like it or not depends on your listener's taste but uh, it sounds very professionally I would say and uh, it's really incredible that he's able to combine high quality research with high quality music and musical compositions. And the last thing that well, I want to ask you before we delve into this interview is that if you have a chance, then please consider reviewing this podcast on Apple Podcasts or in the comments, even on YouTube, and give me some feedback in regard, what do you think about this podcast and do you find these interviews useful? And as a helper resource, if you want to get into audio programming or audio research, also regarding spatial audio, I can offer you a free audio plugin developer checklist, which lists all the pieces of knowledge that you may find uh, useful that you need actually for developing audio plugins. And you can get this checklist at dwolfsum.com slash checklist. And the response to this checklist was very, very positive. So if you still haven't grabbed your free PDF, then 
dualsound.com/checklist. And now let's go to the interview. Hi Tom, thanks for agreeing on this interview. Yeah, thanks for having me. Could you introduce yourself to the audience? Sure, I'm Thomas McKenzie. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Alto University studying spatial audio and acoustics. How did you get into audio research? Uh, I I was doing well. I played in bands and played music from a young age and wanted to do technical things as well. So I went to Leeds University in the UK and studied mu music, multimedia, and electronics. Then I studied masters in sound design for like post production, film, TV, and then came to spatial audio, and here I am. Okay, and which uh, instrument did you play? I played violin from the age of seven and then picked up the guitar and bass and anything with strings <laughs> from 14, 15. Awesome. And then uh, you decided to do a PhD in audio. Yes. Could you say what was your PhD about? Uh, very simply, it's the audio for virtual reality. So we have uh, sounds coming from all around us, not just left and right, but it has to be delivered over just headphones, just left and right. And um, you, we can use ambisonics, which is a nice way of doing this, um, which allows for rotations of head and things like this rather naturally or rather, rather elegantly. And then my research specifically was trying to improve the high frequency rendering of uh, low order ambisonic so Amazon so it could be used in in sort of mobile phones and small devices like that. Okay, and uh, can you summarize in one sentence what are ambisonics? Uh, ambisonics is a spatial audio um, format that uses spherical harmonics to decompose a sound field or a sort of spherical sound field into um, directional weights, so things like forwards, backwards. Stuff. Awesome. And then how did you find yourself at Alto University? I saw a job and I applied for it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So what is your current position here? I'm postdoctoral researcher. Okay, cool. And your research then, again, I assume involves virtual reality audio? Yeah, I'm still looking at virtual reality audio. A lot of the things I'm looking at now are for six degrees of freedom, so where the, the participant can move around in space as well as rotate their head. Cool. And what would you say is the most important factor in virtual reality audio to achieve a realistic effect for the listener? Uh, I think it's really important that the timbre, that the coloration is very low, so it sounds very realistic. And then I think also it's very important that it sounds outside of your head not just inside your head. Okay, is that the biggest challenge when it comes to reprodu binaural reproduction for headphones? Yeah, probably it's it's the this inside head localization. It's quite tricky. Awesome. And why would you say people prefer headphones to other playback devices? I'm not sure they would. But I don't think people necessarily prefer headphones. I think that They are smaller and more portable, but I think uh, probably for listening to music, most people would argue that loudspeakers are more, na are more sort of natural and more uh, pleasant, I think, for group listening as well. Okay, and can you also use loudspeaker for virtual reality? Um, it's probably more tricky, uh, but there are things like technologies like crosstalk cancellation that at least allow binaural audio over loudspeakers, but this would be more tricky if you're wearing a headset and moving around the room, I think. Okay. Could you tell me a little bit how does personalization look in virtual reality? Hmm. So a lot of the time, the binaural audio that we would have in virtual reality, like if you go on YouTube and watch a 360 video, you can spin the video around or if you have virtual reality heads headset you can um, look around and um, the audio in your ears, the binaural audio, will change according to the position that you're facing. But what these would use is um, 
this would be non-individualized binaural audio, so it wouldn't be specific to your ears. And what that then gives is certain things like you can sometimes confuse whether a sound is coming from the front or the rear, and also the timbre, the, the coloration can be a little bit different, so the, especially the high frequencies can sound a bit unnatural. And uh, personalization and individualization can then, of course, improve this and make it more immersive then and make it more realistic and more close to the actual way your, your ears hear in real life rather than this simulation in synthesized binaural experience. So um, to do that can be done using individualized HRTF, so individualized uh, binaural measurements. So you, you sit yourself in a, a large anechoic chamber with loudspeakers at lots of different positions and measure the transfer function, so the change that happens between the loudspeaker position and your eardrums uh, for lots of different positions. But this is, of course, expensive, not very uh, mm -hmm. easy to set up or run and takes a long time. And uh, so I think it's a long way off from that being um, something that would be commercially or at least widely used or viable. So then there are other things for personalization, such as you can take a photograph of your ears and then use something like machine learning to try and extract the parts of your ear, the, the size, the shapes, the, the contours, that then create what makes your HRTF, your binaural audio, um, personal to you, and then try and match these two up, and then change the audio that you get to your ears accordingly, which is quite an interesting idea. So then, of course, it would be much easier, much simpler to do. You just simply take a picture, or maybe take a video of your ears, and then um, and that could personalise your audio for you, but that's maybe a little while off. I don't know if it's quite hit the market just yet. Mm. Okay, then two final questions. How can people experience the usefulness of spatial audio research at home? Well, I think YouTube is a really nice resource. It has lots of really nice concerts and things like that in, in virtual reality with spatial audio and they're really nice to sit through and listen to and sometimes you'll think mm, this is actually really a bit more immersive because you can look around because you can look at a specific singer or a specific um, performer that's quite nice I think things like um, head mounted displays and oculus rift and uh, HTC vibes and things like this are coming down in price so you can get a a virtual reality headset fairly cheaply now and that allows you to experience some of this spatial and some of this virtual reality in yeah quite good quality and it's quite fun i think beat saber is quite a fun game i don't know if you've played that no i haven't that's very good <laughs> you should try it what is it about it's uh it's a sort of musical game where you have two lightsabers in your hands and you have to slash the blocks that come towards you in time and in the right place. And, uh, and then you get points for your score, how, how good you are. Okay, that's, that actually sounds pretty cool. It's really good. It's very addictive as well. <laughs> but of course, only for research purposes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, important to research these kind of things. Could you tell me what was your experience of transitioning from the UK to Finland? Well, I came a um, challenging time in May of 2020. So there was coronavirus lockdowns everywhere. There was uh, Brexit taking hold. So it's not been the easiest time to move country. Um, but I mean, I like Finland. I think Finland's a nice country. I think it's beautiful and I like the nature here, I like the people here, the culture is quite nice. And speaking of people, what do you think is the best thing about Alto Acoustics Lab? Uh, I think the kit that we have. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it's of course the people. People here are very nice, very yeah. welcoming. And from amazing, uh, like an amazing variety of countries, 
which means that you have the most interesting conversations at lunchtime. Yeah. Also in multiple languages at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and then what are your plans for the nearest future? Um, I don't know. Well, I plan to stay in academia and do another postdoc. But I don't know where yet. I don't know what it would be doing. Okay. Then best of luck. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you very much. And thank you for doing this interview. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, everyone, that was Tom McKenzie of the Alto Acoustics Lab. Thanks, Tom, a lot for this interview. And for those of you listening, all the people, places and references mentioned in this podcast episode, along with Tom's music, can be found under dewolfson.com slash talk 007. As final few reminders... Please remember about my talk at the Audio Developers Conference 2022, be it ahead of us or already behind us. Make sure to check it out if you're interested in deep learning for audio. And don't forget to grab your free audio plugin developer checklist at dualsound.com slash checklist. Thanks a lot for listening and see you in the next one. Take care. <laughs>